I... So, uh, tell me what happened, man. How, you, how are you feeling right now at this moment? Oh, dude. I had to go and make sure I shouldn't be out of the hospital, put it that way. They wanted yeah. to keep me for at least two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month. Hmm. But I had to prove to them I could walk minimal distance and I wasn't going to do much. And I have to agree to have three times a week outpatient therapy. Hmm. It's about 68 hours. The Red Cross is actually going to bring me up. The only reason to help me at Dartmouth and only Dartmouth is they have a victim's crime thing there. And what it is, I just want to explain how it works first for everything else is uh, if I'm a victim of a crime, a very serious one in this instance, uh, the hospital's going to pay for my bill as soon as I get a lawyer and we take the court and whatever the settlement is, they're going after them to pay the bill for them. So it's pretty much like they're forcing to get the money on it and helping me get sued. So they're backing me up 100% as a victim mm -hmm. with my lawyer to go to court. And whenever it wins, they're, you know, what I'm saying, they get their money pretty much by suing the guy too, mm -hmm. in a way. Can you take us back to that day uh, in the square? Well, to say how it all kind of started is uh, three days before it actually. Um, I was with a couple of my free party union members and that is political party off the Occupy movement. A bunch of people believe in the Commonwealth and you know how people in a community should live by a community, by local community sports itself. What good is living in a community if you don't know people or you, you don't know the person down the road or you can't feel safe? And the chalk sprung a great idea for us and gave us a great idea of saying, hey, let's put out some positive messages smile, have a good day, or some beautiful quotes, people, random people were putting beautiful quotes down, and beautiful pictures by kids, people, and this is all over town. And we started doing it in a positive aspect. Everything was a positive, positive. No harassing comments, no political views, just positive influence. And after three days of doing it, we were out in the morning, a bunch of us, doing beautiful pictures, doing a mural for fat stuff, a mural for the UCC church, one for local burger, you know, and um, we're seeing a bunch of these handicapped people in wheelchairs, very, very mentally, physically handicapped, but there was a lot of them, I mean a lot, and they were coming by waving to me, waving to me, waving to me, and then one person comes up with a couple people, and they ask, am I so-and-so? I said, yes. They said, we love the artwork you guys have been doing in town. These handicapped people, we barely can get them to come in the town once a day. They don't like to come to Keene. They're very, they don't have nothing to look forward to, but Keene isn't one of them. And in the last three days of seeing the poetry, the smile, the smiley face, the pictures, they can't wait to come to see Keene. They want to see it every day. They love the pictures. They're excited to get up in the morning and get to Keene. And for three days in a row, that was happening with these MFS patients, 42 exactly. Mm -hmm. So we had the idea of let's do a community event. 6 to 10 at the common to do our community chalking, free chalking, come bring your parents, get to know people, bring your kids, let's have a good time. Went off like a hitch. I had about 30, 42 people there, a bunch of kids. I was told there was about 16 kids there, a bunch of families, people that we don't even know, just in the community, having a grand time, getting to know each other. And then out of the blue door, he kind of walks up out of nowhere with about a bunch of pumps with an orange bucket. And she dips her bucket in there and she's about to erase her three feet away a little girl's flower while she was chalking. And I said to her, I protested with my hands up, I said, stop, what are you doing, stop. And she screamed at me, shut up, shut your fucking mouth, shut up. And I screamed just a little bit louder and I got football tackled from the front, thrown and launched into a granite fountain. Smashed through my head, head first into about nine jagged rocks. My fiance, who was 142 pounds, pulled me out by herself. I was in shock, couldn't move, shaking. Broken bones popped out of my shoulder. Luckily, an EMT who was there with his family, off duty enjoying the chalking, came to my rescue before the ambulance got there and instructed people how to keep me on my back. Now I get down to the hospital and this stupid cop, who I can't see because I have blurry vision, practically blind for the first six hours from the head injury, which is right here 
on my head, size of an egg, because I hit with such blunt force it didn't crack my skull, but blunted it. And this is going to stay for the rest of my life, they said, because it's like a calcium buildup type of deal. Your head's going to heal where it needs to heal, it'll be harder. Causes severe head injury and concussion. They transferred me to Dartmouth Hitchcock, it was a blip from that. He told me, did you put your hand on Dory? And I said, absolutely not. Even though I couldn't see, I told him, I swear in the Bible I didn't touch that woman. And I was at least a foot and a half or so from her. I would I touch her? I was trying to do a community event for the children that were there, where people was peaceful till she showed up and ruined it. Tell me about what injuries you sustained. Uh, where are your bones broken? Where do you feel pain? Well, I have pain practically all over my body. I have 13 fra hairline fractures throughout my body, actually. My left side of my collarbone is shattered. My right shoulder is cracked and broken in three places, and it was dislocated and had to be put somewhat in place. It's kind of all hanging here like a jigsaw puzzle without glue. If I move it the wrong way, I could actually break it or hurt myself. I have five here fractured ribs and broken ribs on my left side, four on my right. I have a hairline fracture to the middle of my left arm, right in the middle bone, where there's this nice showing of where the rock smashed into me, in a nice spot right here. And this is actually an outline of pretty much the bone from the rock where I have a fracture that's about that long. Uh, how has it affected your walking? Well, I have I'm going to show you what it looks like, excuse me, show you what the injury on the leg looks like, pardon me for a minute, mm -hmm. gentlemen. Uh, uh. Need a hand here? Yes, no. As you can see, I have a fracture where the bone's kind of popping out here in my leg. I have two hairline fractures where this lump is on my knee that causes it to push up and do this when I put pressure. I also have a fracture here, here, and here from where I landed when the rock hit. And that's when I put pressure does like that. It's just a little pitch, you know, just opening and shutting of the bone. I can't put pressure on my right leg to the point it affects my walking horribly. Apologize for that. So, uh, got three vertebrae injured on my back. I have two with hairline fractures in the middle and lower. And I actually have two which are right next to each other. It's a C5, C6. It's the widening of the left facet joint, which means in two weeks when I go for surgery, they're going to bar it together because it's too far apart because of the injury, which was a pretty substantial neck injury with it. I don't know if you could notice, but I have slight bone injury popping out from the left side here. And with the neck injury, it affected my uh, vertebrae where my nerves are. I have to take out a pet now when I have the shakes. Hmm. I've never had the shakes in my life, and my friend, even when he had a radiator problem, he had me pour the water in it, you know, because I have a straight hand. Right. I have shakes now, and I probably won't heal for up to three to eight years if it even healed. And it's permanent nerve damage, practically. How are the injuries affecting your fathering? Well, the mother of my child's in a very deep depression right now. She's with family and her fiance, and I can't really take care of my kid, so I had to let her take care of it. And it's really hard on my daughter because she's autistic. You know, it's, it's tough because she doesn't know what's wrong with daddy at this moment. And why, you know, I mean, she could have come see me tomorrow, but it's not like me always being the parent because I'm the main parent. I take care of my kid all the time. 
Are you going to explain to your daughter what happened? It's pretty much the way I have to portray it to her is I have a boo-boo. She won't understand. Oh, tacos in here. The, the rights, if you would like to read the line of how it was brought in, first page here, the hospital speaks for itself. Okay, so oh. what I'm reading here is from uh, a discharge summary. And uh, should I begin here? Oh, you can begin right how it happened, they tell you. Okay. Right there. Uh, it begins, Matthew Oldershaw is a 30-year-old male, presents to DHMC, or Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, SP altercation and assault this afternoon. Description of the events leading up to injury includes patient was involved in a community event for sidewalk art for families and children when he was pushed by a protester into a stone fountain. He fell on his shoulder and back. He was transferred from Keene Hospital. Mm -hmm. Primary survey revealed intact airway, equal breath sounds, respirations, present two and a half peripheral pulses with stable vital signs and no signs of bleeding, GCS 15, six follows simple motor commands, five, alert and oriented, four, opens eyes on own, and complete exposure. Secondary survey is as follows, with the following injuries identified. Fx of R ninth posterior rib, R posterior sixth rib, Fx, two, acute minimally displaced fracture of the inferior scapular body, and three, age indeterminate fracture of the superior end plate of the L3 vertebral body. Um, is there anything else that you recommend I read into this? Well, it pretty much, when it goes into it, it gets even a little bit more and how they control the pain now is that be on pain meds for this. And I'm not on pain meds. I'm 17 months sober, alcoholic, recovery. You know? So this is something that probably affects me in the long run. But I feel like, you know, if I keep it up, I think I can go some places. For when we went out there, you know, I went out in a positive aspect for the town, the community. I went out there to do something for people to get to know each other. In this community, whether you live in with a place you don't know people, you can't get along. We're all here. You might as well just learn to get along and know each other. And what not better than having a community event. And this was a sabotage act. I felt like I was a marked person. She put me out on a stop free keener blog I noticed two days ago. Something to do as if she was marking me for death. And here I am, half my body smashed to pieces. Who do you hold responsible for that? Well, I hold responsible Dory mainly because she doesn't like things, but she doesn't understand, I don't think, what I was trying to do. Either way, it gives her no right to come out like a mafia person. She doesn't talk. The girl has nothing but power. It's control. How can you live with a person when you're trying to support a community and she wants nothing to do with the community, apparently? You know? We're not puppets on a string here. Are there any other injuries that you'd like me to get a close-up of? Maybe your hand? Uh, holding it steady. To try and hold it as steady as possible. Okay. Uh, are there any other injuries that you'd like me to get on camera? Um, if you can help me here with this. Yeah. I'd love to. You want this over your head? Yeah. Help me with the 
see the difference probably in the shoulder length anyways. This is be trying to hold it up straight, by the way. Okay. All throughout here has hair like fractures and fractures and displacements. It's hanging because it was partially dislocated and there's fractures leading up to the collarbone and the left sh shoulder blade is pretty smashed up. I may have to go to surgery on that too if it doesn't heal correctly. I have to go three times a week, six to eight hours a day physical therapy every week for the next six weeks. Surgery in two weeks for my vertebrae on my neck. I don't know if that will show. Do you have any other sort of outpatient care that you are expecting to undergo this um, next few weeks? Not only am I doing physical therapy, um, they, they're just going to have to really have to teach me how to walk again with my leg because I have the nerve damage. I'm also going to have to to learn to do things differently. Uh, until my left hand heals up, I have to learn to be a righty. And I'm not a righty, I'm a lefty, so it kind of puts a bog <laughs> Wiping your ass sometimes, I guess you could say. Are you able to walk? No, not on my own, hardly at all. Any hope of you walking again normally? Probably not. They said most likely I'm going to need a cane for up to at least a year. Can I give you a hand with that? Please, sir. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Let me put it inside out. Any ideas to the cost of the medical expenses so far? So far, I could estimate with them being about 1800 a night, it said, just for the rooms. And I was hospitalized for four days. I expect it probably well over the 30000s range rate at the moment. Probably going to grow. Right, right. You all right in here? So you said that the, um, sorry, I don't want to touch your arm here to uh, hurt you. Can you uh, get it through? You. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I, I think you said you. earlier that the doctors said you're lucky to be alive. Yes, um, actually three different types of doctors had to deal with me. I had a doctor for neurology, which is one for nerves, you know, and the amount of nerve damage I sustained. Is this on correctly? <coughs> the other way. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're in. Yeah. Looks like you're in a lot of pain. Oh, I'm wicked bad. Not only do they have me on gabapentin 300 milligrams at about 1800 a day. I'm on Rocaset 5 milligrams, two pills, about four times a day. And that's pretty horrible because that doesn't feel good for my stomach. I have a hard time eating now. Sleeping sucks. With all this pain, it's almost impossible. I haven't slept in three and a half days. I didn't know today was Friday, by the way. I thought it was Thursday. This gentleman, I'd like to just bring one second if I could have you come here, sir. I just want to say that I thank this gentleman here for picking me up and taking me as a volunteer to bring me home. He's such a great friend to have looking out for me. Anything for you, Matty? Anything else that you want to say? I'm going to treat this in such a positive aspect that I've been told by a couple lawyers, I don't know who to decide, but I'm going to go after the town. For the fountain was not marked a hazard. No, watch your staff, no, not, don't play around. So I'm going to sue the town. If the police do not arrest this person, when I have a lawyer, we're going to sue the police station and get that police officer with some type of affidavit to get him suspended until it's investigated. I'm going to fully go in and prosecute um, Dory if I can find a way, because I was told bullying is illegal in New Hampshire, and that's exactly what that was. She should be arrested even for disturbing the peace, criminal threatening on me. You know, this is a public event. Everybody was peaceful till she showed up. There was not one derogatory chalk mark written by a five-year-old that I can remember seeing that day. You know? And whoever threw me into the fountain, gosh darn right, I'm going to sit there and prosecute him to the fullest. Because what he did was un 
uncontrollably real. I could have died from my neck injury. One doctor said alone from the head injury I could have just bled internally if my head didn't heal right and they didn't pop the bone from my neck in place because the way it was displaced up here was stopping the flow of blood. This has caused such pain on me. It's impossible to say that I'm going to be able to heal correctly within two years, if that. But you've been real generous with your time. I, I think you should get some rest. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. I hope you feel better soon.